join me inside my writing here. Come on. Thank you for joining me for this session of Ask Cozy Grammar. I'm Thomas, Marie's Cozy Language Consultant, and it's my pleasure to be with you here this afternoon or evening or morning, depending on your time zone. A special thank you to everyone who joined the, the call a hair early. It's always lovely to have a chance to, to meet you and to learn you know, where in the world you are, what in the world you're doing, what in the world you're using um, Cozy Grammar's courses for or any of Cozy Grammar's resources. So thank you for coming on the call. I see there's a number of people here. Some people were here last time. Some people are new. Welcome to the new people and welcome back to those who were here for our first call a couple weeks ago. We have a lot of questions today, so I want to jump right in. Um, but before I do so, to make sure I am properly prepared, I wanted to have a cup of cozy tea. Because you can't have a cozy fire on a somewhat chilly day without a cozy cup of tea. At least that's what Marie would say. Her favorite tea, by the way, was a kind of English breakfast tea, which I also like. But having lived in South India for several years, I've also acquired a taste for South Indian masala chai, which is what I made for myself today. But as I was saying, we have a number of different questions today, and so I want to jump right into those questions. If there is time, we'll have uh, maybe some more live uh, Q&A at the end of the call, although last time we ran out of time, so we'll see what happens this time. Uh, we can adjust as things go on, depending on the interest in these calls. So our first question is actually the last question we had from uh, two weeks ago. We ran out of time then, so Sunita R's question comes first today. Uh, her question is this, why are commas so confusing? I get lost in all the rules. Where should I start? Now I think this is an excellent question because commas indeed can be very confusing. And in fact, in the basic cozy punctuation course, uh, we've dedicated an entire lesson to the use of commas, which includes not only 12 different ways of using commas, but also an additional uh, lesson from myself on using commas as a writer and how I've found ways to use commas to add clarity to writing. Now, that can be very intimidating to someone who's just starting out and just wants to know how do I use a comma. So I'd like to follow one of Marie's rules about teaching, which is to begin with the simplest and most straightforward ways to use punctuation. Because if you can master these basic principles, then you can go on to use punctuation in more complicated ways. And indeed, there is perhaps no mark of punctuation which is more uh, argued about by scholars and by publishers and by editors in the comma. There are entire schools about the usage of commas, schools of style, schools of punctuation. But at the beginning, when we're just trying to wrap our heads around the use of punctuation, the use of commas, it's helpful to be as clear and as basic as possible. So what I wanted to offer, uh, at least as far as this live on-screen gathering is concerned, are three simple uh, points, three points that are very useful, in my opinion, to beginners. And the first is simply this. A comma is a mark of punctuation that shows a brief pause, which helps us make sense of a sentence. Now I'll repeat that. A comma is a mark of punctuation that shows a brief pause, which helps us make sense of a sentence. Let me give you an example. If I said, hi, Sunita, you'll notice there's a pause between the word Sunita and the word hi. Hi, Sunita. That's how we would say the word out loud. And when we're speaking out loud, we don't need any punctuation because we punctuate, so to speak, with our pauses, with the inflection of our voices. It's different, for instance, if I say, hi, Sunita, or if I say, hi, Sunita, that tone in my voice suggests 
a different frame of mind, a different uh, emotional state that I might be in. When we use punctuation, one of the most important things that it does for us is it shows us on the page where the inflections or the pauses of our speech would go if we were saying out loud what we were writing. So for example, if I said, hi, Sunita, if I were writing that statement, I would write, hi, comma, Sunita. Then you can see on the page that brief pause, which helps us to make sense of what is being said. That's a very simple example, but it's a useful reminder, I think, of the purpose of punctuation and the purpose of commas. Now, Marie does something very interesting. She likens punctuation to traffic signs. The signs you see along the road telling us to stop or to yield or to turn right or to turn left. These punctuation signs tell us which way to go with a sentence. When do we stop? When do we slow down? When do we pause? So for instance, for the comma, Marie likens it to the traffic sign which says to slow down. Maybe there's some construction going on. Maybe it's a, a curve that you need to take slowly. Whatever the reason, the slow down sign reminds us to take a little pause to reduce our speed. And that's what a comma does inside of a sentence. It reduces the speed of a sentence, so to speak. Hi, Sunita. There's a space there. Now, all of this is to say that if we keep in mind that the purpose of a comma is to not only make a break or a pause, but also to help us understand the sense of a sentence, then the rules of comma usage become simpler and easier to grasp. So here's my second point. We use commas when making lists. For instance, in my uh, South Indian masala tea, I added some ginger, cardamom, and pepper. Just a little bit of pepper. Now notice I've just given you a list of three things. Ginger, cardamom, and pepper. And notice that I've given a pause between each of those items in my list. Ginger, pause. Cardamom, pause. And pepper, pause. Ginger, cardamom, and pepper. Now, if I'm saying that out loud, I pause naturally because I know that's how I will be understood. When we're writing, we indicate that same cadence of our voice using commas. For instance, in my tea, I put ginger, comma, cardamom, comma, and pepper. Speaking of which, I'm going to have one more sip. Mmm, very tasty. Anytime we make a list in a sentence, we use commas. Now this applies to a list of things like ginger, cardamom, and pepper. It also applies to a list of actions. For example, today I'm going to sit down, read through the questions, and answer them as best I can. Here I have three different actions. I'm going to sit down, read the questions, and answer them as best I can. Here we would use commas to separate this list of three actions. Today I'm going to sit down, comma, read the questions, comma, and answer them as best I can. If you keep this second point in mind, a lot of the rules of comma usage will become clearer. And the third rule I would suggest uh, as far as learning how to use a comma is that a comma is very useful for adding information into a sentence. For example, Thomas, Marie's cozy language consultant, sat beside the fire. Here we have a simple sentence. Thomas sat beside the fire, into which I've inserted an additional piece of information. 
Thomas, who's Thomas? Marie's cozy language consultant. To add that information into the sentence, I used a pair of commas. Thomas, comma, Marie's cozy language consultant, comma, sat beside the fire. So here's a simple way we can use commas to add information into our sentences. And in fact, for people who are trying to improve their ability to write, whether as young people or as adults, using commas is one way of allowing your sentences to become more complex, more interesting, and more varied. Did you notice, by the way, I gave you three adjectives, more complex, more interesting, and more varied. If I were writing this down, I would use a comma between each thing or each set of adjectives. More complex, comma, more interesting, comma, and more varied. So that's how I would approach the use of commas in the beginning. Keep it simple and focus on several key principles. In addition, keeping those principles in mind, read good writing. Read published books, read the newspaper, and notice how those writers use commas. Where are they using commas in lists? Where are they using commas to add additional information into a sentence? And where are they using commas to add a pause uh, in thought or in the rhythm of a sentence? This will teach you enormously about the use of commas from the inside, so to speak. Then the rules of commas, the rules of the usage of commas will become more and more clear, and in fact, I think, more and more interesting. So thank you, Sunita R. I really appreciate your question. And please, you know, do, do let me know if that answers your, your question completely. 